Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Label the Map tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you will label map layers, work with label properties, and customize labels using ArcGIS Arcade. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've opened ArcGIS Pro and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. We'll start by opening the Label the Map project package. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Label Your Map. Open the one with the authoritative badge. The project opens to a map of the Wellington, New Zealand suburbs showing flood zones in light blue. The base map already includes a reference layer that labels the neighborhoods, which is great, but we don't have much control over the styling or placement. The Suburb Boundaries layer has more information about the area and will allow us to control the appearance of each suburb's label. Right-click the light gray reference layer and click Remove. Open the Suburb Boundaries attribute table and notice that the Suburb field contains the values that will be used to label the suburbs. Close the attribute table, click the Labeling tab, and click Label. The suburbs are now labeled with the names we just saw in the table. On the Labeling tab, expand the Text Symbol Style Gallery and select Landform slash Physical Region. In the Label Placement group, click Land Parcel to suppress labels that don't fit completely within their feature. Zoom in and notice that more features are labeled. If you pan the map, the labels change position to stay in view. Labels are more helpful at some scales than others. We'll set a visibility range for the suburb boundaries labels so they don't display at close-up scales. On the Labeling tab, set the maximum scale to 1 to 7,000. Click the Map tab, click Bookmarks, and go to the TRO bookmark. Depending on your map scale, the Building Footprints layer may appear. If necessary, click Fixed Zoom In until the labels disappear. City planners may be concerned about damage to historic buildings in the event of a flood. The Building Footprints layer is already symbolized to show which buildings are historic. You'll zoom in to a small area that lies within the Flood Risk Zone and label the historic buildings with their names. Go to the Historic Buildings 1 bookmark. Right-click the Building Footprints layer and click Label. Open the Building Footprints attribute table and sort the Historic field in descending order. We can see that most of the name values for historic buildings have proper names, whereas non-historic buildings are typically named building, house, or warehouse. Close the attribute table, right-click the building footprints layer, and click labeling properties to open the label class pane. We'll create a SQL query to only label historic buildings. Click the SQL query tab and create a new expression where historic is equal to yes. Click apply and see that only the historic buildings are now labeled. A lot of the names overrun the feature boundaries. We can take steps to minimize this. Occasionally, a label may be placed outside the feature boundary altogether, which will prohibit. In the Label class pane, click the Position tab and expand placement if necessary. Change the Horizontal in Polygon setting to Straight in Polygon to label features on their longest axis. Uncheck the May Place Label Outside Polygon Boundary checkbox so labels cannot be placed completely outside their features. On the Labeling tab, change the font size to 8 and the color to white so that labels are easier to read. We can pan around and look at how the labels fit across the neighborhood. Some buildings have long names and still don't fit well within their feature. Back in the Label class pane, click the Fitting Strategy tab, expand Overrun, and change the maximum overrun to 5 points. Now if a label overruns its feature boundary by more than 5 points, it won't be displayed. Expand Reduce Size and check the Reduce Font Size checkbox. Under Font Reduction, change the lower limit to 7.5 points. This will allow the software to decrease the font size slightly if the labels don't fit. Change the Font Width Compression lower limit to 95%. This setting allows the software to move the letters closer together to help the labels fit. On the Map tab, go to the Historic Buildings 2 bookmark, where you may see some historic buildings that aren't labeled. On the Labeling tab, click View Unplaced to see unplaced labels in red on the map. Click View Unplaced again to turn it off. 
At the bottom of the map view, change the scale to 1 to 10,000. At this scale, the overrun setting prevents most of the building labels from drawing. However, some may still be visible. Let's set a visibility range so labels turn off when we zoom out too far. On the labeling tab, change the minimum scale to 1 to 2500. Finally, we'll label civil defense centers which are frequently used as emergency shelters. Go to the Tayara bookmark and zoom out to a scale beyond 1 to 10,000 if necessary. This prevents the building footprints layer from drawing. In the contents pane, turn on the civil defense centers layer. On the map, click one of the red dots to open a pop-up. The labels for the civil defense centers will be based on the site name attribute. Close the pop-up and label the Civil Defense Centers layer. Change the text symbol style to the Populated Place style. We can add more information to the Civil Defense Center labels with a label expression. Click one of the Civil Defense Centers to reopen the pop-up and notice there is a capacity field that contains the maximum number of people the center can hold. Close the pop-up. Back on the Label Class pane, click the Class tab and click the Label Expression tab. Change the language to Arcade. Add the following text to the expression box and click Apply. The site name and capacity text both display with the same font size. Let's make the center name stand out by decreasing the size of the capacity text. Change the expression to the one shown below and click Apply to see the changes. This expression can be copy and pasted from the written tutorial. We've made a lot of labeling changes to different layers. We can see exactly which labeling properties are applied to each layer in a summary dialog box. On the Labeling tab, click the More drop-down arrow and click Summary. The labeling summary shows each label class in the map with information on scale ranges, SQL queries, advanced expressions, and fonts. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.